so this is the uh, conceptual questions on wave mechanics introduction. Oh, and we have one more week. That's wave mechanics wrap up. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a um, it's weighty set of topics. I do think uh, uh, the two weeks that we have set aside is the right amount of time. So, so as I've been saying for many weeks by now, this is the part of the course where I'm excited to ask perplexity these questions because um, these are the kind of questions that ChatGPT wasn't doing so well on. So I want to ask uh, the better version of generative AI and see how well it does. So let me start with the question one and then we'll go from there. I might have to type out a lot of these mathematical expressions don't copy and paste well. So um, in wave mechanics, we use yeah that wave function. Yeah, just type psi xt, and the, there's a kind of different convention when you use capital psi, and when you use lowercase case psi. Basically, anything the time dependent wave function you use capital psi, uh, the time independent one you use lowercase. Um, if you cannot give physically meaningful description of psi. Oh yeah, there is no physically meaningful description of that. You have to take an absolute value squared and that'll give you the, uh, let's relate it to, uh, let me emphasize it, relate it to psi xt. So absolute value squared will give you probability density um, for whatever that means. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, wave function and probably the density. <laughs> but it's not the amplitude itself. The amplitude itself doesn't have physical meaning. You have to take the amplitude, absolute value squared, meaning uh, it's a. Uh, it's n so then you know your probability density isn't complex as this wave function is. It's a topic of yeah, <laughs> various interpretations. The version I'm teaching is uh, it's the orthodox interpretation called the Copenhagen interpretation. That's what I'm legally required to teach you. Uh, Born rule, yeah, that's the part of the Copenhagen interpretation. Uh, it gives probability density, yeah. You have to make, yeah, yeah that's it. Um, yeah, function itself is complex. In general, uh, if you have bound the state, you could uh, find a version of it that's meant guaranteed to be real. Um, as long as you ignore the time-dependent part. Time-dependent part will always be complex. <laughs> so, yeah. That's why I think at the beginning of this semester, I said, uh, I know I've been teaching complex exponential for two semesters when I'm not supposed to. This semester, I am supposed to. So when we used the complex exponential for optics, it was only like half a semester early. Yeah, yeah, it's essential. That's why you can't avoid not doing it. Um, yeah, normal situation. Yeah, they, oh, this uh, kind of seems extraneous, but I mean, sounds good. Yeah, wave function does not have a direct physical meaning. But the absolute value squared um, does uh, in represent the probability density. Good, good answer. All right. Uh, this I feel like a, a ChatGPT answered this correctly. Conservation of energy. That's uh, really that really uh, simple idea. That it's really to so. And let me type h bar squared divided by two m. And then partial squared. I'm using a kind of uh, bastardized version of LaTeX uh, notation. I think uh, uh, perplexed will understand what I mean by partial. Uh, it's a fairly standard um, keyword for those who use LaTeX. Plus of x psi x is equal to i h bar. Same deal with the h bar. Partial psi divided by partial is a related to concept. Oh, I guess Perplex technically doesn't know what Physics 4A is, but he might be able to guess, or he might ask me, what does the Physics 4A cover? Okay. Yeah, what does <laughs> Physics 4A cover? Um, so I'll say Physics 4A covers um, mechanics. 
uh, I won't say conservation of energy because that's something you are supposed to give me. Oh, yeah, that's wrong. Oh, wow, it didn't do correctly, huh? Huh. You made me guess. I mean, so, you know, like uh, speaking metaphorically, you could say Schrodinger equation is the Newton's second law of quantum mechanics, but um, um, it, it doesn't conceptually really, the whole idea of force is not meaningful in quantum mechanics. So, um, yeah, let's process the driving. There's a product to a function. Hamiltonian operator. Yeah, so he knows about Hamiltonian, but uh, I'm, um, yeah, so I mean, uh, so this is both at once um, way more advanced, and it's uh, missing the point. Maybe it'll uh, get to the right answer here. Provide fundamental transgression in quantum state. Okay, changes in time due to the influence of kinetic and potential energies. That's good. The first term here relates to the uh, kinetic energy. This is basically momentum squared divided by 2m, and this relates to potential energy. But, um, like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, um, I mean, do any of these? Not really. Um, yeah, this is a disappointing answer. And, uh, and I'll tell you that if I see something like this in your conceptual questions answer, I know it, uh, one, I know it didn't come from this class because we don't talk about Hamiltonian operator. Um, like, I mean, you know, what we have here, it is Hamiltonian operator, but I don't think uh, not once I refer to it as the Hamiltonian. I do talk about operators. I do talk about momentum operator, um, the, the uh, potential energy operator or position operator, but uh, like because we are not doing the full uh, like Hamiltonian mechanics, I I don't think I've ever once said the word Hamiltonian, so um, or the Laplacian operator because we don't deal with it in full three D. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, but I I'm disappointed, but I, I don't think I'm all that surprised. Um, because, uh, yeah, let me actually go from here. Uh, because it's, uh, again, um, large language models, they're not sentient. They don't actually understand things. Uh, it's a text prediction model. So, uh, so you ask it to uh, give you a profound insight. I don't think large language models do that. If it's a training text that happens to include uh, something that someone's written that contains their profound insight, maybe it does, but it's not going to synthesize ideas on its own because one, it doesn't work that way. So, all right, let's copy that. And I think all the expressions here actually copy correctly because they're not uh, math code, it's just uh, uh, Unicode. <laughs> Those taste paste fine. All right, let's ask and see what it does. So if you measure it immediately again, then it it's gonna be at the same position uh, within the precision. Initial shape of it, uh, Gaussian. Uh, that's a Gaussian is what you would see in the uh, simulation lab. So. Quantum mechanics has profound effect on the function, like collapse. Um, so well, collapses to a new state, yeah, like a delta function around that. An immediate measurement means, yeah, it'll be, yeah. And, you know, if it worked any other way, like a measurement would have no meaning. Like, how do you even verify a measurement? You When you immediately, like, in a quick succession, measure the same thing twice, you get two different results that... You know, science cannot work that way. So, um, so yeah, immediate remeasurement would make it so that you um, get it at the same position. Now, I guess, uh, so in the simulation lab, you will see what the time evolution for the collapsed wave function looks like. 
it's fun. <laughs> uh, this outcome is had that not spread. Yeah, yeah, that's a good answer. Um, yeah, and uh, after you measure, it'll actually spread really quickly because the process of measuring delivered a lot of uh, momentum uncertainty. So the wave packet will spread a lot more quickly than it would have before the measurement. All right, so that all looks good. Uh, question two, I'm disappointed at this uh, long, overly technical answer, but uh, as disappointed as I am, I don't think I'm all that surprised. Um, I mean, it's a really simple uh, description. This this is basically, I mean, even it, it even got the fact that this is a describing energy, like, you know, it, uh, total energy, like Hamiltonian is the total energy. So it, all it had to say is the, the Schrodinger equation comes from the consideration of energy in the system. Like Newton's second law reference, that's at best confusing, at worst wrong. Uh, because of the idea of force doesn't have any... Uh, because uh, the whole idea of definite particle trajectories and um, those things have less meaning in quantum mechanics than it did in uh, classical mechanics. So the classical ideas like a force um, doesn't have any utility in quantum mechanics anymore because um, this is the kind of thing that would have been useful when you had a definite particle that uh, a particle that moves in a definite path and you don't have that in quantum mechanics.